Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 24 of Book 7. Now, in this proposition, it states that if we have two numbers, a and b, where a and b are both relatively prime to the number c, and if we take a fourth number, which is equal to a times b, then c and d will also be relatively prime. So to recap, the greatest common divisor between a and c is 1, greatest common divisor between b and c is 1, d is equal to a times b. This proposition states, if we're given these three conditions, then c and d will be also relatively prime. So let's prove this by contradiction. And again, we start with a and c relatively prime, b and c relatively prime, and d is equal to a times b. Now let's assume that c and d are not relatively prime. In other words, there's a number not equal to 1 where e measures c and e also measures d. Now since a and c are relatively prime and e measures c, According to Proposition 23 of this book, if these two conditions are met, then A and E are also relatively prime. So we have A and E are relatively prime. Now let F equal a number that E measures D. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So let F equal 12. All right, in this example. Now, since E measures D F number of times, that means that F measures C E number of times, and according to, that's according to Proposition 16, which is the definition that D is equal to E times F. So all of this here is just to basically show that if E measures D, f number of times, we can say that d is equal to f times e. So now we have that d equals f times e. Well, d is equal to a times b. It's also equal to f times e. Therefore, f times e equals a times b. Make sense? According to Proposition 19 of this book, if you have two numbers, that are multiplied equals to another two numbers that are multiplied, then the ratio of the inner ones, e to a, will be equal to the ratio of b to f. So e is to a as b is to f. That's Proposition 19 of this book. So we have the ratio that e to a is equal to b to f. Now a and e are relatively prime which means that a and e are the smallest two numbers that can, use, that can be used to represent the a ratio of e to a. Now, since e and a are the smallest number in the ratio, then b and f will be multiples of e and a, respectively. So, in other words, e measures b. So again, E and A are the smallest numbers that could possibly represent this ratio. B and F is equal to the ratio. So therefore, E measures B and A measures F. Now the important part here is that E measures B. This is all according to Proposition 20 of this book. Now, E measures B and E measures C. So therefore, according to this, B and C are not relatively prime. But of course, our original condition was that B and C were relatively prime, and hence, there is our contradiction. Consequently, there are no numbers, there is no number E that measures C and D, and thus C and D are relatively prime. So to recap, if A and C are relatively prime, B and C are relatively prime, a number d created by multiplying a and b together will also be relatively prime 
to see.